In this video, we'll go over how to make a simple game in 15 minutes in Unreal Engine 5.4 using blueprints. The goal of the game will be to collect all these orbs or coins before the time runs out. And if you do that, you'll win. We'll start off by creating a brand new project. We'll go to games, third person template, and create. Once our project is created, we have to create the tokens, orbs, or coins that the player will pick up. So to do this, I'll right click and create a blueprint class, and I'll make it an actor. We'll call it something like BP token orb and we'll open up this blueprint and we'll add an object and in this case i'm just going to make it a sphere but you can make it a static mesh if you wanted it to have a specific model but i'm just going to use the sphere i'll make it a quarter of its original size so it's a little bit smaller and i'll also add a sphere collision to detect collisions around that object so the player can collect it and i'll pretty much just set this up like this and then we'll head on over to the event graph and start adding our functionality. So the idea is when the player comes in contact with it, they'll pick it up or collect it, or that object will remove itself from the scene. So what we'll do is on the event actor begin overlap, when another object or actor overlaps this object or actor, we can do something. And what we want to do is make sure that our player is overlapping with this object and not something else. So we're going to do a cast to blueprint third person character and that's our player that's the blueprint that our player is and the object that we're checking what the other actor is is this our third person character so we'll connect up that other actor to our cast to blueprint third person character as the object and after we have this this will kind of filter out any collisions and see if what is colliding with this object is our third person character and if so what we'll do is we'll destroy the actor and the actor that we're destroying the target is itself not the self of our third person character but the self of this blueprint the token or the orb so if we compile and save this and place this object into the scene here like i'll just place it now maybe i place a couple of them and we click play when your character collides with it those objects now get collected or disappear. Next, we need to check to see if you've collected all the tokens or orbs so that we know that you have won the game if you collect them all. We'll do this whenever we pick up our token or orb. So whenever we pick up one of these tokens, uh, we destroy the token, but what we'll also do is we'll get all actors of class and that will get all actors in the scene of a certain class and that class or type will be our blueprint token orb so we'll see how many of our token orbs remain in our scene and here it outputs all those actors but what we'll do is just get the length and that way we can see how many of these token orbs remain in our scene and if the amount of token orbs in our scene is less than one, so we'll do a branch to check a condition, and we'll see how many remain in the scene. And if less than one remains in the scene, well then you've collected them all, and you win the game. So if that's true, we'll print some text, and we'll print something like you win. And if we were to try this out, and I play this and collect both these orbs, in the top left it now says you win. So now we want to create our win screen. So we're gonna go and right click in our content browser. We'll go to user interface. We'll create a widget blueprint. We'll make it a user widget and we'll call it something like BP underscore winner. And we'll open this up and this is where we can design our interface. What we'll do to make this really quick and simple is we'll drag and drop a border in here. So that's our screen. We'll drag and drop some text in here. So now we have some text. And what we'll quickly do is just change our border. Uh, you can see the hierarchy here of everything you've added. We'll go to our border. We'll change the brush color to something like black. We'll take our text. We'll center it horizontally and vertically. Change the text to something like you win. And then we'll make that font size uh, a lot bigger. I can just kind of drag it up to something like this. Now we have to display this when you win. So I'll close this. I'll go back to the token orb blueprint. Instead of outputting text that says you win, um, what we'll do is we'll delete that. And if you win and you collect all the orbs, we'll create a widget. The widget we're creating is our blueprint 
winner. And what we're going to do is add it to the viewport. So we'll do another node called add to viewport. And what we're adding to the viewport is our created widget called blueprint winner, which is the, the blueprint that we just made for that windscreen. And now if we compile and save this and we play, we collect both these orbs or tokens, the winning screen gets displayed. I've placed some more of these orbs around the scene, but maybe we want a time limit where you have to capture them all or get them all within a certain amount of time. So to make something like a timer that doesn't belong to maybe one specific object, but more to do with the overall game, we could store that in the game mode blueprint. So we can go here to game mode and edit our third person game mode. And when I open up this blueprint, I can go to variables and I'll add a variable just to keep track of our timer. I'll call it something like time left and I'll make it a integer, which is a whole number. And I'll turn this little eyeball on so the variable is public and can be accessed and read from outside of this, this blueprint editor and accessed by other objects or things as well. So after that, I'll click compile and save. We need to give it a default. So after clicking compile, I'll click on time left and maybe I'll give 60 seconds to collect all the orbs. So I'll put 60 in here and that's going to keep track of our timer. So to make our timer function or have that timer count down, we're going to do that in the level blueprint. So I'm going to go up here to open level blueprint, which is a blueprint that's attached to this map or this level. And I'm going to go to the event graph. And in this event graph, we're going to add a event called begin play. So when the game begins playing, this event becomes triggered or it starts. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a timer by function name. And then we can set this so it runs a function every X amount of time. We'll make that one second. And we'll make it looping so it happens again and again and again. So every one second, it's going to run a function. And that function will be whatever function I put into here. So we have to create that function. So I'm going to go over here and create a new function. So I'll click on the plus. We'll give this function a name. I'm going to call this function something like update timer. And on this update timer function that we now have that we've created, what I'm going to do is cast to blueprint third person game mode. So that game mode where we added that variable for our timer, that time left variable, we're gonna access that through this blueprint. And to do that, we'll use this cast to blueprint third person game mode. The thing we're checking to see if it's this game mode is our current game mode. So we'll do something like get game mode and then what we'll do is as that third person game mode, we will get our variable that belongs to that other blueprint. So we can drag this out and do get time left. And there it is. Now we're getting that countdown timer variable we set up that starts with the value of 60. And what we're gonna do is use a decrement node, decrement int, which minuses one from it and it will set the new value. So it's gonna take our time left, minus one, and this function is gonna run every time the timer updates, which is gonna be every one second. So the function we're running is update timer, and now it will count down our time left variable by one value every one second. But we need to make sure that we can actually see this timer count down. So what we're going to do is close this. We're going to go and create another user interface, widget blueprint. We're going to make it a user widget and we'll give it a name. Maybe we'll call it something like BP underscore counter. We'll go in here to panel. We'll throw in a safe zone. We'll throw in a uh, vertical box, we'll center that and center that, and then we'll throw in two text fields into that vertical box. And the first text field will just be text that says time left. We'll make this bigger so it's easier to see when you're playing. I'll do that for both of them, make sure they're both centered. And for the second set of text, we could just leave it as two zeros as a display thing, but we're going to bind our variable of our time left counter to this. So what we'll do is we'll go to the text on this second text box here, 
Now we'll go to bind, create binding. And very much like we did before, we'll do a cast to blueprint third person game mode. We'll get our game mode. And as third person game mode, we will get our time left variable. And that will be the text that we return. And it'll automatically do a two text conversion here. And we'll compile, save that. Now that we've designed that countdown timer and have it using our time left variable, we have to attach it to our screen. So we'll go here to open level blueprint. We'll go back to the event graph. And before we start our timer, we'll attach that countdown UI element to our screen. So we'll do a create widget, set it to our BP underscore counter, and we'll add it to viewport. And then we will do our set timer by function name, which starts our timer function and starts minusing one from that time left variable. And I have to make sure I connect up this target here for what we're wanting to add to the viewport. And if we save that and play, we now see the time left counter and we can collect these orbs and the time is counting down. Now, the only problem is that countdown timer will keep counting down and when it reaches zero, it'll keep going even lower. It'll go negative one, negative two, and, and so on. So we have to make sure that when it reaches zero, it displays a you lose screen. So first we'll create that screen. We'll duplicate our you win screen. We'll call it BP underscore uh, loser. We'll open it up. We'll change our text from you win to you lose. And then we'll save that. So going back to our open level blueprint, we'll wanna go to our update timer function and each time it minuses one uh, from our, our time left variable, we're gonna check to see if it has reached zero. So to check if our countdown timer has reached zero, we'll do a branch. The condition will be, has our time left variable gone to a value lower than one? If it has, well then you have lost the game. And what we can do is create our widget BP underscore loser, and then add to viewport. And that's it. And we can compile and save. And now we can see if the time left reaches zero and I haven't collected all the orbs, like I leave a couple there uncollected, well then it displays our losing screen. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, make sure to like and subscribe. And one final thing we should do is also make sure if you win that it doesn't actually show the you lose screen if the timer reaches zero. So we should add one more variable in there or deactivate our timer or stop it when you win the game just to prevent those things from happening. But if you're part of the Patreon, which you can find a link to down in the description below, you'll get access to the PDFs for these videos. And this PDF will go over all the steps you saw in this video in a little bit more detail. You can also start to add things like moving cubes to make it more challenging to collect the orbs like I've done here. And then it starts to make the games a bit more fun because it becomes much harder.